we talk about classic confrontations, you have a fastball pitcher on the mound. He's been throwing most of his fastballs up in the strike zone. And the pitch that Willie Randolph likes to hit is a high fastball. A gorgeous early evening in Southern California. The Yankees up two games to nothing. Everybody was probably giving up on the Dodgers. They said, oh, again, the, those Yankees. But it had already been a special season for L.A. and their rookie phenom. Fernando Valenzuela on the mound. And it was fitting that in Game 3, the Dodgers would again be calling on Valenzuela to rescue their World Series hopes. You've heard so much, read so much about his poise despite his youth, and he's going to have a chance to prove it here now. And state to a three-run lead early, Valenzuela went to work. Yo creo que se necesitaba ganar ese juego, entonces estuvimos uh, siempre en problemas en el juego. Siempre había corredores en base. He wasn't as sharp as usual. He had lots of trouble. La Soda came to the mound several times. He's struggling, isn't he? He's all right, Tom. Huh? He's all right. Tom, que siente cansado. En muchas ocasiones, si uno no puede con un lanzamiento, entonces hay que buscar otra forma de cómo sacar de a los bateadores. As the game went on, he got very, very comfortable against a lineup that was just an extraordinary uh, lineup the Yankees had. Got to give Fernando some credit. Not too many 20-year-olds would struggle like this and still be out there. And when the Dodgers took the lead back, Valenzuela continued to battle to protect it. Valenzuela in and out of trouble all night. You know, they're totally right about this kid. There is amazing poise there. Es uno de los juegos más emocionantes, más recordados en mi carrera. This was not the best Fernando game, it was his finest. Thanks in large part to the guts of Valenzuela, the Dodgers were back in the series. But as the start of game four soon proves, momentum can be fleeting. ABC Sports presents the 1981. Series. Live from Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, the New York Yankees against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Last night in Game 3, Ron Say with a two-out, three-run home run in the first inning off Dave Brigetti to give the Dodgers a quick 3-0 advantage. But the lead was short live, Fernando Valenzuela struggling early, and a home run by Rick Cerrone in the third with a man on gave New York a 4-3 advantage. But the Dodgers came up with two in the fifth to go ahead. Then the Yankees ran themselves out of a possible big inning in the eighth. Ron Say turning this Mercer bunt into a double play. Dodgers win the game 5-4. Yanks lead in the series two games to one. Today, game four. Dodger Stadium sold out again as the Dodgers try to get even in the series. And this ABC Sports presentation is brought to you by Lowenbrow. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Lowenbrow. By Chevrolet, who invites you to see all the good things for 1982 at your local Chevy dealers. Chevy makes good things happen. By Gillette. Makers of Good News and Swivel, the twin blade disposable razors. Gillette puts two great shaves at your disposal. And by General Electric, GE makes products that make life easier and better. At GE, we bring good things to life. And hello again, everyone. I'm Al Michaels. Welcome to Dodger Stadium Game 4. The Dodgers sort of like this script. Remember, they were down two games to nothing in the divisional series and came from behind to beat Houston. Down 2-1 to one against Montreal. Beat the Expos in Montreal to advance to the World Series. Down 2-1 to one now and very confident as they try to even the series and in quest of their first World Championship since 1965. A crowd of more than 56,000 looking on at Dodger Stadium. Right now, let's join the PA announcer at Dodger Stadium, John Ramsey. And now, to honor America, here to sing our national anthem, 
a great performer and a star of days of our lives, Miss Gloria Loring. What so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. Gloria Laurie. Thank you, Gloria. Ladies and gentlemen, the honor of throwing out the first ball today goes to a man who managed the Dodgers to four world championships. Let's welcome Walter Alston. Walter Alston. A man from Ohio, a great pocket pool player, a quiet man. He came in, took over the then Brooklyn Dodgers. Nobody knew much about him. What a job he did. He managed them to their first World Series title ever. It was in 1955. Remember? The Dodgers lost the first two games of that series. But in game one, there was an augury. Jackie Roosevelt Robinson stole home on Whitey Ford. Barrow went crazy. We look at it from another angle. It was in the ninth inning. The Dodgers were trailing six to four. Did Barrett tag him in time or not? But then, the final game, game seven, the teams nodded at three apiece. Barra, Amaros, just inserted in place of Gilliam. Therese, the relay to Hodges. McDougal doubled off. Martin had been at second. They were two on in the sixth inning, and the Yankees were trailing two to nothing. Had Gilliam st still been in there, he would not have been able to make the catch. Alston in the clubhouse, jubilant with the winning youngster, Johnny Padres. That's the way it was in 1955, and maybe the greatest memory for the man who threw out the first ball today, Waller Alston. Before I use my head and feeties, I get the eaties for my weedies. Before a day of doing splitties, I get the eaties for my weedies. The eaties for weedies. That undeniable, irresistible urge for the crispy, crunchy, whole wheat taste of the breakfast of champions. Before I swing for the bleacher seedies, I get the eaties for my weedies. Part of your good breakfast. Hi, I'm Chris Chambliss. You know, baseball is full of opportunities. In 1976, I had the opportunity to help the Yankees into the World Series, and this home run did it. Another place full of opportunities is the Army, where you can travel, learn a valuable skill, further your education, and get generous financial aid for post-service studies. So consider the Army, where you can be all that you can be. Call this number toll-free or see your local Army representative. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Starting lineup for the Yankees, Willie Randolph leading off. Batting second, Larry Milburn in the third spot. Hitless in the series, Dave Winfield. And then comes Reggie back in the lineup and Gamble back in the lineup. And then the big hitter for the Yankees thus far, Bob Watson. Rick Cerrone with a hot bat last night. And Aurelio Rodriguez, Nettle still sideline, 
Rick Russell, a pretty good hitting pitcher. Al? Defensively for the Dodgers, Steve Garvey, two hits last night and five in the series at first base. The second baseman, Davey Lopes, this infield has been together for eight years now, since 1973. Bill Russell is the shortstop, and around at third, last night's offensive and defensive star for the Dodgers, Ron Say. In the outfield for Los Angeles, Dusty Baker, who will be batting fifth in the order, dropping down from third in left. Pedro Guerrero, again getting the start in center field, and around in right for the Dodgers, making his third start in four games, is Rick Monday. Back of the plate and making his first start, though he did play last night, came in as a pinch hitter for Jaeger and stayed in the game, Mike Sosha. And on the mound for the Dodgers is Bob Welch, who made 23 starts and no relief appearances during the regular season, and no starts and four relief appearances in postseason play. Welch has not made a start since the 3rd of October, which was the day before the regular season ended. And here he is in an attempt to get the Dodgers even in the series at two apiece. Willie Randolph to lead things off for the Yankees, then Larry Milburn and Dave Winfield. Randolph does not have a hit in the World Series. However, last night he reached base safely three times, walking on each occasion, as Valenzuela went all the way, yielding seven walks. But a gutty and gritty performance by Fernando. And the Dodgers winning it dramatically five to four. So Welch looking in, and here we go. Randolph taking high for a ball. National League umpire working back of the plate. Doug Harvey. Randolph bluffs a butt. Looks at a strike. We've got Rich Garcia of the American League at first. Extello over the National at second. Larry Barnett, American at third. Nick Colosi of the National League down the line and left and Terry Cooney down the line and right. He was back at the plate last night. Two and one on Randolph. Welch, 6'3", 190 pounder, 24 years old, born and raised in Detroit as Randolph goes the other way to right field and in for a base hit. Takes an erratic pitch by Monday. Randolph with good speed around second on his way to third and he's in there standing up. So Randolph getting a fortuitous bounce as Monday moved over into the corner to try to cut it off and he winds up at third. And you see the reason for this bounce is on the Bermuda grass which is different than most fields with the exception of Texas in the American League. The ball comes back on you. Kenny Landrow said that it's a big difference playing here in Dodger Stadium. Monday knows he can't catch the ball goes over and the ball takes that reverse spin goes right by him as you said Randolph has excellent speed easily into third base. This is the ballpark where the ball takes funny bounces. Well we saw that last night but that was primarily in the infield. Larry Milburn the batter only say a third is in everybody else is back and the pitch missing ball one one and oh. There's say in the cutout at third a ground ball to any of the other Dodger infielders would produce a Yankee run. Two and oh the count on Milburn and there you saw the high fastball Bob Welch more or less a power pitcher throws a lot of fastballs has a good slider and a curveball strikes out of just about six a game pretty good control under under three walks per nine innings but has not started a game in three weeks and you wonder if that's going to have some effect today out of play and the count is two and one two one pitch is lined down the line in right field it's a fair ball the Yankees lead it one to nothing and it will be a double for Milburn Van reaching out but the ball staying in play as Monday gets it back in Milburn Coming in today, hitting 4.06 in postseason play, and that'll go up a few notches. Whitfield. And here again, as uh, he did on Willie Randolph, the leadoff hitter, he gets behind two and one, throws a fastball in the middle of the plate. Not too successful when you get behind major league hitters, especially in the first inning, and and he hasn't pitched for a while. And again, you'll see a fastball right down the middle. Milburn most likely looking for a fastball. Pulls it in the corner. 
One nothing Yankees Milburn atoning somewhat for the transgression last night on the bases and Dave Winfield stands in hitless in the series and Sosha has to block it in the dirt one and oh. On deck and making his first appearance in the World Series, Reggie Jackson. Winfield hitting only 103 against right handed pitching during postseason play. Against lefties, he's hit 429. Well, his job here is not to drive the runner in, to get him to third base. That's why you see Welch trying to throw him a breaking ball, hope that he'll hit it to the left side and keep the runner at second. Welch behind on the count, two and zero, with Milburn at second and nobody out first inning. Yankees jumping on top, one to nothing. Lopes at second, pushed over toward the middle. Now field playing Winfield to pull. Inside again for ball three, three and zero. Look at the Dodger defensive lineman. You see Lopes playing almost up the middle at second, and that helps to. Cut down on Milburn's lead, and in the bullpen, the Dodgers waste no time. Dave Golds, who was up early last night, is up early today. Three and zero on Winfield, and he's aboard. So a triple, a double, and a walk, and the first visit from Ron Paranowski, the Dodger pitching coach. It's interesting that both managers opted not to go with their game one starter today in recent World Series. We've quite often seen a pitcher work in game one and also in game four with the off day. But we'll go back to the game one starters tomorrow when it will be Jerry Royce for the Dodgers and Ron Guidry for the Yankees. And if you project ahead if you go to a seventh game and they stay in the current rotation you could have one game for the world championship on Wednesday matching again the two rookies that we had last night Valenzuela and Rigetti. In the meantime that is rich. Remains to be seen how much if any he's rusted at the plate because of his absence he was swinging well. But two big home runs in the Milwaukee series. And similar to the confrontation we depicted in the pregame show. They were one and one back in 78. One strikeout, one home run. One and all on Jackson. Each man remembers it vividly. So we're down to the last out for the Yankees. Dent, the tying run at second. Tiebreaker Blair's at first. Reggie Jackson is the batter. You couldn't ask for a more dramatic moment for a young pitcher to walk into right here. Great one. Wow. One ball, one strike. They've been sending that low bridge all night to Reggie Jackson. He really gets out of the way late, doesn't he? And you know the guy at the plate, a guy who just has a knack for knowing the greatness of a moment, Reggie Jackson. Piles it back with fastball is one ball, two strikes, two outs. Piled it back. What a battle. How to play. Look at that study. Ball. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Foul back. Jackson continues to battle Welsh. Welsh continues to battle Jackson. Ball three, we're down to a full count. Three balls, two strikes, two outs, and they pick up the percentage now. Paul Blair will be off as soon as Welsh starts to play. Quite possible he could score on that long single.
just for Reggie Jackson. He thought he might have gone up for a bad pitch to end the ball game. He was very disgusted. His reaction is phenomenal if you watch it. When he finally got to the dugout steps, he threw the bat into the dugout among some Yankee players. He obviously was not aiming for them. We did not see it all, but there were some upset Yankees, not just because they lost. lifetime nine home runs in World Series play and five of them have come in this ballpark of the nine eight have been hit against the Dodgers the other three that weren't hit here of course were hit one night in New York well all he's faced four hitters and he's been two and oh and all of them. Yeah. I always felt that if you're going to try to get out of a jam you'd want a guy like Jackson up there because if you're going to be able to strike a guy out Reggie of course is known for having a lot of strikeouts. Remembering back to the pregame show Reggie went to his knees with that swing and miss just as he did in 78. And here you see actually a ball but Reggie is not up there to walk goes for the high one similar like you said back in 1978. And I have to think if he hits a ground ball you're not going to see the Reggie Jackson that you normally see a guy with pretty good speed because of the, the muscle tear Two one pitch he goes the other way in the left field for a base hit they will stop Milburn at third and the bases are loaded as the throw comes into say interestingly Milburn kept looking at the ball looking at the left fielder he ran tentatively last, last night's experience has made him very careful. Well, that and the fact that there is nobody out, and the last thing you'd want to do is sure. have somebody thrown out the plate, but you were, you were right. And Reggie, he throws him a curveball, 2-1, he just goes with it. Reggie known for his power to all fields. And Milbourne's not taking any chances. Meanwhile, Welch is done as Lasorda visits the mound, and he'll go to the bullpen, so Bob Welch Gives up the triple to Randolph, the double to Milburn to make it one to nothing. Walks Winfield, the base hit by Jackson, and he's gone. The sort of wasting no time goes to the bullpen, and the Dodgers will go with Dave Goltz with the bases loaded and nobody out in the first. He sits there alone in Wisconsin with what he's been through. When he told me yesterday that Lasorda had privately told him he would start today, he was himself doubtful of himself he said it's been so long since I've pitched I'm afraid I may have rusted out and that inner fear manifested itself with today's terrible disappointment quite a human story but there is another story Dave Goltz who had some decent seasons at Minnesota including a 20 victory year in 1977 the Dodgers shelled out a lot of money to sign Goltz as a free agent Prior to last season, he was a disappointing 7 and 11 in 1980, and then this year, 2 and 7 his mark. He won his first two decisions and then lost his last seven. So Goltz, who pitched in game one on Tuesday night, he faced one batter, got Lou Pinella to pop out to end the Yankee fourth inning. Comes on here with the Yankees in front, one to nothing, the bases loaded. The Yankees have Milburn at third, Dave Winfield at second, and Reggie Jackson at first. And with nobody out, Oscar Gamble coming up. Oscar Gamble. And pitch outside for ball three. Three and one. Well, as we said earlier when Oscar played, uh, He's up there to hit home runs, but he has an excellent eye, and he's looking for a ball in the middle of the plate. He's run the count to three and one, 
And a successful pitcher has to get his breaking ball over when he's behind the count. Gamble popping it up into shallow center field. Lopes is going out. Here comes Guerrero, and it's Pedro finding the sign, making the catch, and no advance by the runners. Big, big pitch, big, big out. Pedro Guerrero, who has had his troubles in center field in the past couple of years at Dodger Stadium, in the daytime in particular, that ball hit a little too far to be ruled an infield fly, despite the fact Lopes went out for it. One gone. Watson hitting it high in the air to left field. Dusty Baker lining it up with Milburn Tangy. That's the second out, and the throw home is out in front of the plate for the throwback the first time in time. So the Yankees lead it. Two nothing. Bob Watson getting home to run. Baker with a strong throw, but out in front of the plate. And then Sosa trying to get Jackson going back to first. Well, it's a high fastball, but it runs in. Doesn't get all of it, just far enough to score Milbourne. Baker makes a strong throw, and I don't know what Reggie's thinking about, but again, heads up play by the Dodger catchers. They're excellent arms, both Yeager and Sosa. So Jackson getting back if you're wondering by the way had they gotten Jackson the run still would have scored it would have been a double play but not a forced double play two nothing with two outs Cerrone at the plate fouling it away on one Cerrone hitting it toward the middle but backhanded by Lopes Davey does it himself and that's that for the Yankees in the first inning the Yankees sending seven men to the plate coming up with two runs Three hits, disposing of Bob Welch, and two men left on. So after a half inning in game number four, two nothing Yankees. And now the starting lineup for the Dodgers. Davy Lopes leading off. Batting second, Bill Russell. Moving up to bat third, Steve Garvin. Moving up to bat cleanup, Ron Say. Having troubles at the plate, now batting fifth, Dusty Baker. Then Rick Mundy, Pedro Guerrero, Mike Sosha, and the new pitcher now, Dave Goltz. Defensively for the Yankees, Bob Watson driving in the run with a sacrifice fly at first base. Willie Randolph, who got it started with the triple and the errant hop in right field, is at second. The shortstop, Larry Milburn, who scored Randolph with the double. And around a third, again with Nettles out of the lineup today, it's Aurelio Rodriguez who had two hits last night. In the outfield, Oscar Gamble. In left, Dave Winfield is moving over to center. Winfield, of course, uh, at San Diego, played mostly right field, though he did see some action in center. He's not a total stranger to that position. And around in right, Reggie Jackson. Back of the plate for New York is Rick Cerrone. And on the mound is a man who is no stranger to the Dodgers, Rick Russell, spending his entire career in the National League with the Chicago Cubs until coming to the Yankees just prior to the strike. First, as we looked for a moment at Russell and now at Lopes, Jim, I think it must be admitted that Goltz did a very efficient job. They got out of that very cheaply. Well, that he did. He came in under... Difficult conditions, especially uh, the, with the fan reaction here. I think he's one of the few Dodgers that they boo. Now came in and made a good pitch to Watson, and just pitched his way out of that jam. As one expert in defensive outfield deficiencies, Jim, in your long career with Baltimore, don't you think maybe the Yankees will be weaker defensively in the outfield with Gamble at left and Dave in the less familiar, though he's a great athlete, center field position. Well, no doubt he's played a great left field for him. And uh, I said at, during the second game that the reason I think they're so much better this year is because of their speed in the outfield. And half their speed is sitting on the bench today in Jerry Mumford. Davy Lopes leading off, takes a strike. Russell with a breaking pitch hit on one hop to Rodriguez at third. And the Dodger leadoff man is gone. One out in the Batting first inning. Second. And Number that brings eight. up Bill Russell. Russell. Russell three for 12 in the series two of the hits coming last night 233 his mark for the regular season.
if you're going to describe Rick Russell, I would say he's almost like a right-handed Tommy John. He throws a sinker, never throws the ball the same speed, changes speeds on his fastball, has a curveball that lopes it to third for the first out, has a little bit of a slider, and just keeps the ball down in the strike zone. He's a quick workman. His roly-poly appearance, as I suggested, is utterly deceptive. A good runner, a good fielder at his position. Good breaking pitch, and Russell with a count one and two. Full count, three and two. The Dodgers with a lineup change today, so Garvey is on deck, moving up from four to three as Russell hits a chopper to Rodriguez. Aurelio strong throws in time, so Rodriguez has handled both Lopes and Russell, and there are two down in the first inning with Steve Garvey coming up. Russell was 10 and 11 with a 3.43 ERA against the Dodgers in his 10 seasons with the Cubs. Remembering where the Cubs finished in those 10 seasons, that's not too bad, James. Well, also considering Wrigley Field, I think I've never pitched there, but you want to have a nightmare for a pitcher pitching Wrigley Field when the wind is blowing out, and I think that's probably why most of the Cub pitchers have developed sinker balls. Your only chance there is to throw the the, the ground ball. Garvey takes that. Side. It's also why some of the Cub statistics are uh, not particularly indicative of the type of pitcher that would be working for Chicago. Your earned run average would have to suffer well, pitching half your games in that It's like part. in our league, uh, it's hard to really sometimes get a true indication of what statistics mean in Fenway Park, either for a hitter or a pitcher. Garvey goes to right center field for a base hit. Garvey is now six for 12 as he continues to sting the ball in the series. I'm here if you're wondering about the health of Reggie. Gets to the ball nicely. He makes a strong throw, a little bit off target, but Garvey not wanting to be thrown out stays at first. So the Yankees ahead, 2 0. Bottom of the first, two down, Ron Say. A home run last night in the first inning. He had a perfect night last night. Two walks, a single in addition to the home run. And of course, the great defensive play on Mercer's bunt in the eighth. Russell's had his number over the years. One happy fella today. Everybody around him. He was enjoying the delicious afterglow of his performance last night. Say lining it to center field, but right at Winfield, who has no problem with his first chance of the afternoon. The Dodgers are done in the first, and we'll go to the second with the Yankees ahead, two to nothing. The eight, nine, and one hitters in the second inning. Yankees ahead, two nothing. Goltz in relief of Welch. It's line just foul outside third, and that will provoke Joe Altabelli, who for a moment looked like he was headed for the third base umpire Larry Barnett in a B line, but he backs off. The 0-1 to Rodriguez ran it in on him. The count is 0-2. There you saw that good sinker that Goltz can throw. And he's the type of pitcher, if he keeps the ball down, that could be very successful, as you said, against a, a club like the Yankees, Howard. Fouled away, and the count holds. Fifth game here tomorrow, and it will be Ron Guidry and Jerry Royce, rematch of game one. If a sixth game is necessary, Tuesday, Yankee Stadium. Figure to be... Bird Hooten and Tommy John. Foul away. And as we mentioned before, you project to a seventh game, and wouldn't that be something? Valenzuela and Rigetti for the world title. Interestingly, the Yankees like a like in Valenzuela to Larry Gura. But old timers, knowing that Valenzuela is only 20, talk of him with tones usually reserved because that's what they expect him to become. Reserved for people like the greatest. There he is with the bubble gum. Paul Hubble. 
Lawrence Bond, great left-handed screwball exponents of the past. 2-2 pitch, Rodriguez chopping it foul. Into the Dodger dugout and the count holds. That's going to take a lot of doing, Jim, as you know. A lot of years, a lot of consistency, a lot of proof. It certainly is. One year does not make a career. I don't mean to downgrade him in any moment, but you see a lot of pitchers come up and second time around the hitters adjust. And begin to just, you have to adjust and he's shown the ability to do that this year. Kept it in there and down he goes. That's the young man who said he was not nervous yesterday. Disappointed in himself. He said he just couldn't get any pop on his fastball. That's probably from not pitching uh, as he said for seven days. It's interesting that that both clubs had pitching problems. The Dodgers because they had to go away from their five man rotation and to, to go to a four man rotation or really three in this World Series. And the Yankees having their pitchers over rested. And I think you saw the effect last night both on Valenzuela and we're getting Rick Russell at the plate fouling it straight back and right below us. Where were you coach. He was gone. That's I was prepared was. to catch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Catch it where? <laughs> you, were, you were prepared for the parking lot <laughs> last I looked. <laughs> I remember. I remember getting clubbed on the chest by Butch Hobson while Euchre sat next to me, the former great second string catcher, lying beneath the table and saying, get it, coach, get it. <laughs> well, he didn't have his mask on. <laughs> Sandy Koufax here again today throughout the first ball last night also pitched batting practice before the game last night breaking pitch in there for Paul strike three so a couple of strikeouts and Goltz has come out of the bullpen to set down the five men he has faced Dave by the way in the American League with Minnesota had a one in four lifetime mark against the Yankees but he's been no mystery here in the National League over the past two seasons. One and four, you say? Lifetime. While with the Twins. Yeah, but that's deceptive too. I saw a couple of those games and he pitched very well. Randolph tries to bunt his way aboard in the count of one one. Sandy Koufax. Come a long way from Lafayette High School in Brooklyn. University of Cincinnati. Silver thatch now. But trim. Beautifully trim. Yes. I mean, having pitched the last game against him, it, it was amazing to see him throw as hard as he did and then have that be his last game. Going through the counter 15 years ago. 1966. Is it that long? Mm -hmm. Tell you what Goltz is doing. He's adding to the lift he gave the Dodgers in the first inning when he kept the Yankees within reach, within bounds. One and two on Randolph. He gets in a groove. He can be this way all day. Randolph fighting it off. Now Ooh. holding one and two. Moving it around there, Jim. Well, Came the ball is running. Yep. Right, exactly. And, and kind of all he throws, it bores in on the right handed hitter, and he can start it on the inside part of the plate, and it's going to move a good six or eight inches. Tough ball to hit fair. If you do, you hit it on your fist. And you can't hit that ball too hard. Randolph hitting a fly ball to right center field, deeper than Guerrero first thought, and gone. So Pedro misjudged it, but it didn't matter as it carries to right center. And Randolph, who tripled in the first, it's a home run here in the second. Out of nowhere, just as we were talking about how good Goltz was looking. Willie Randolph hit only two homers during the regular season, but of course he had one against the A's in game three in the American League Championship Series. And well, now another here. Well, we we're also talking about how he got the ball inside. That one is right in the middle of the plate. And here's the difference between Dodger Stadium and Yankee Stadium. The ball just flies here. And you don't see Randolph going out over the right center field fence too often. But we did mention, Jim, that right center is his power out. Well, that's where he drives the ball, but 
you were going over a scattering report of Willie Randolph, you would say look for home run. No, you would say he has double power. He did happen to hit one off me a few years ago. Is that unique? No, not at <laughs> all. Not at all. Rick Mundy said that he has never seen the ball carry the way it did last night. In the first three innings. Maybe that accounts for some of the balls going as far as they did. That and the fact that they were bad pitches. 0 oh and 2 the count on Milburn who takes up high. 1 and 2. 2-2 two -two pitch is chopped to the right side. David Lopes waits for it. Throws him out. In the second inning for the Yankees. They stretch their advantage with a run, one hit. Randolph's homer. Nobody left on. At the end of one and a half, it's 3 0 Yanks. Very quickly, a final score from South Bend, Indiana, where Southern Cal has wrapped up a 14 7 victory over Notre Dame. Notre Dame missed two field goals and fumbled the ball away in scoring territory late in the football game. The winner for Southern Cal, a 26 yard run by Todd Spencer with just over four minutes to go. Now back to the Dodgers. Dusty Baker up. Jim Lampley just told our viewers that the Trojans of Southern California have defeated the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame 14 to 7. Coach Faust having a very difficult initial year. Dusty Baker leading things off in the bottom of the second inning. 1 0 the count. 2 2 pitch is just outside. Ball three. Last night's Yesterday's time. here. Dusty Baker, by the way, has a good career hitting record, 338 against Russia. Maybe this is the man to get out of the slump of this. Line, but right at Milburn, who cradles it for the out. One gone in the second inning. Batting six, number 16, right fielder, Rick. A lot of times on knuckleballs. Excuse me, on a line drive, the ball will knuckle, and what Milburn did what he should do, get right in front of the ball. So one away, and Rick Monday, his figures during the regular season. Said he's ready to become a broadcaster. He'll be ready to work in about a month, Al. Well, he'll work in the offseason, but I'm wondering about whether he'll continue that the next season begins. He lines one to left field and Gamble angles himself against the Sun to make the catch. Two down. Remember a couple of years ago, it looked like Rick's career might be over with the Achilles tear. Played sparingly in 1980 and again this season. But coming through in the clutch for the Dodgers with this dramatic home run, of course, on Monday to vault them into the series. Pedro Guerrero fouling it away in the count is 0 1. I think we should note that the last three batters have hit the ball on the nose off Russo. Say lining one to center, Baker lining one to short, and Monday lining one to left. Guerrero gets it off the hands and into shallow center field. So they hit three shots and then a looping single. Well, as we said, Ruschel has not pitched in two weeks. And also, he's not a power pitcher, and if, for him to be successful, he has to make good pitches. He cannot throw the ball in the middle of the plate. He has to keep the ball down. He has to move it in and out. And, and here's a ball. He fights it off, but Guerrero is an awfully strong hitter, and he can fight a ball off that gets in on him, And he, even though he looped it. A lot of times a guy like Rice or a guy like Garvey throw a ball in on him and they just kind of fight it off over the infield. Mike Sosa goes the other way lines this one to left but Gamble is there and he makes the catch So the Dodgers of the last five batters four have hit shots four outs one gets a looping single L.A. gone in the second go to the third it's still three nothing Yankees. Dodger Stadium from the Goodyear blip being manned today by Tom Mattis. Harriet Yule manning the camera and Chuck Ferris at the video controls. Gorgeous ballpark. What a setting. Temperature today 85 degrees. The Yankees on top as we go to the third. Three nothing New York with Winfield Jackson and Gamble. You joined us late. Bob Welch started faced four batters didn't get anybody out. Goals came on in the first. 
And Dave working here in the third as Winfield hits a ground ball down to Davey Lopes. One pitch, one away. Winfield now 0 for 11 in the series. And he is very aware of it, beginning to fight himself and starting to talk about it and think about it more and more. Well, you saw that right there. Goldson, as you said, needs to be effective by throwing the ball inside. That ball was almost about six inches inside, and Winfield, instead of waiting for a good pitch, swung at a pitcher's pitch and weakly grounded the second. Right. One away, Reggie Jackson went to left field for a base hit in the first. And it's fouled away. Off to the left, the count 0 and 1. Tommy Bosley, those happy days for ABC. Not looking too happy there. Must be for the Dodgers. Once he played Fiorella on Broadway. 0 1 to Jackson. Up and in. Not as close as Reggie made it look in the count 1 and 1. That ladder is true, but. Somehow Jackson has a history of when he goes into the dirt. Even acting late. He can get up and hit it out. Don't get a man. It's it through the middle into center field for a base hit. So Reggie Jackson who had not seen action since a week ago Wednesday in the second game of the American League Championship Series off the bench and he's two for two with a couple of singles. Yankees with five hits and that's the second off goal says Oscar Gamble comes up from the right field camera. Actually that does help their defense because Gamble is a pull hitter and is trying to hit the ball by Garvey into right field to set up a first and third situation. Oscar unintentionally grounds on the short Russell shovels the Lopes for the course and Gamble is aboard at first. Two down in the inning. So Gamble 0 and 2 trying to hold up on the swing and rounding weakly to the left side. This telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission or other use of the pictures, descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. Bob Watson. A sacrifice fly. In the first inning. 1 0. Dodger Penn busy again. Terry Forster begins to throw. Goltz is due to lead off when the Dodgers come up in the bottom of the third inning. One and one. And it's two and one on the ball. Two two to watch him. It. It's inside for ball three. So full count. I would think here we Ghost will probably come back with a breaking ball. Nope, looks like a fastball in. And it's low, so Watson is a boy. First walk given up by Ghost. It's our nerve center. A look down from the Goodyear blimp. Trucks outside Dodger Stadium. And a look in where crowd of what I would guess to be better than 56,000. They had more than 56,000 last night. 56,236 to be precise. A new all-time stadium record looking on. And very, very quiet right now. The Yankees ahead 3-0. New York with runners at first and second. And two down in the third inning. Cerrone grounded out in the first. Throw down a second and Lopes falling down and one-handing it. Gamble getting back to the bag. Nice play by, Dav by Davey. And what Sosha is doing is just letting the Yankee base runners know that he's not afraid to throw. Might make them be an extra step or two closer to second base and on a base hit. Make it more difficult for the runner to score. One and two the count on Sorrell. Jerome wants the umpire to look at that one. It's Tommy Lasorda in pensive mood. It's on from the dugout. Lasorda 
question last night about why he left Valenzuela in so long. And of course, uh, Tommy, as it turned out, did the right thing. He said, look, it's the year of Fernando. Well, he also told me today that the reason he didn't go to the bullpen was because Welch was starting today. And I, I said, what inning would have been in the ball game last night? He said, probably about the seventh. And they kind of gambled and won. Cerrone grounding it foul outside third. One two pitch. He's fouled away again, and Cerrone taking that one off his foot. The one two pitch again to Cerrone is hit foul again. Yankees two on, two out, third inning. Yankees leading three nothing. Gamble at second. Watson at first, and the one two to Cerrone again fouled away. Cerrone two for ten in the series. Hits it into the hole and into left field for a base hit. Gamble being waved in. And Baker's throw is not in time. Blocked by Sosha. Watson stops at second. And the Yankees have a 4 nothing lead in the third inning. Cerrone hits a slider in the middle of the plate into left. Gamble, who runs well, really, really not even close at the plate. Even though Baker does make a pretty nice throw. So the Yankees have scored in every inning with Watson at second and Cerrone at first. Half a dozen hits for New York. And up comes Aurelio Rodriguez. Forster in the Dodger pen. Lasorda, of course, would just love to see Golds get out of this inning. Dave due to lead off in the bottom of the third as Terry is ready. Aurelio, broken bat bouncer, backhanded by Russell, but he'll have to eat it. And the Yankees have the bases loaded with the pitcher coming up, Rick Russell. An infield single for Rodriguez. Three hits in the inning for the Yanks. It's another ball, ball off Aurelio's fist. It just happens to be in the hole, not hit particularly hard. Got to have to question if, if Goltz is going to pitch all these right-handed hitters inside. You would think that Russell would move over a few steps because part of pitching is playing the hitters the way you're going to pitch them. And he was up the, more or less up the middle. And Golch is pitching him opposite of the way they're playing him. Russell struck out facing Golch in the second. 176 lifetime hitter and the count is 0-1. Russell with two lifetime homers. The last one coming back in 77. Rick this season as a Cub in the first half of the year was two for 25. Ground ball is short. Russell going to Lopes and the force ends the inning. But the Yankees here in the third pick up another run. Three hits. And they leave the bases loaded. They've stranded five. We've played two and a half and the Yanks lead the Dodgers four nothing in game four. There's a lineup tomorrow on ABC. The New York City Marathon, there are the times, 10.30 in the morning, Eastern and Pacific, 9.30 Central. Alberto Salazar, who won last year, predicting not only a victory, but a new world record in the marathon tomorrow. 16,000 expected entrants. ABC Sports Speed and then World Series Game 5 at 4.30 Eastern time tomorrow. On Sports Speed, Howard tomorrow taking a look at Patton in pinstripes. George Steinbrenner, owner of the Yanks, and not a happy man after last night's game. Kenny Landro pinch hitting here in the bottom of the third inning, hitting one down the line and into the corner. Reggie Jackson fielding it in foul territory, and Landro has a double. So Lasorda going to the bench as he must down by four. And Landro responds. So for the first time. Sometimes it's not how hard you hit the ball, but where. And here's just a ground ball, but right over the bag. Landro, I think, might have had a triple if it hadn't been for the fact that they're down by four runs. Reggie makes another strong throw into second base. Actually gets away. Recovered by Rodriguez. The first time interest quickens. From a Dodger point of view. Look from our camera, high third. The positioning of Rodriguez and Milburn is low. There's the right field for a base hit. Ozark waving Landro in. Jackson throw comes in the second. And the Dodgers are on the board in the third. Uh, quickly a new look. 
They had been hitting Russell very hard. Here's the pitch. Game to Lopes. Belt high down the middle. Davey was third hit in the series. The Yankee lead now four to one. Bill Russell, the batter, and the Yankee bullpen will get busy. Four of the five previous hitters to this inning when Landro came up had hit the ball hard against Russia. Russell grounds it foul, and interestingly enough, those four all lining out, and the one man who did not hit the ball hard, Guerrero, looping a base hit to center. Frazier, who pitched last night, George in throwing in the Yankee bullpen, back of Russell, in the third. Lopes goes, the pitch is outside. Sarone's throw, high in time, and Willie Randolph arguing with the ball with a second base umpire, Stello. Usually they tell you don't run when you're down three runs. If they want to bust something open, they want to make things happen, and Lopes has that marvelous base stealing percentage we've told you about in the prior games. He was safe. Baby now seven for seven. In stolen base attempts in postseason play as Russell tries to go the other way, loses his bat, and the ball winds up in the seats off to the right. One and two the count. On the outside corner, and Billy knew it. So Russell gets a big out here in the third. One away. Here you see the curveball breaking right on the corner. Pitcher's pitch. Up comes the man they have not been able to stop. Batting third today, Steve Garvey, one for one, six for 12 on the series, and look at that with runners in scoring position. <laughs> However, Garvey taking inside. Steve, six for 12 in the World Series, and also a couple of loud outs. The only hit he got that was not a shot, Al, was that Baltimore chopper last night. Garvey, a slow bouncer to third. Rodriguez has no play. The way they put your boy the ball, that's what Stengel used to call it, hit down on it. The clay is not at third base. Uh, Jim, the clay is at home plate. It's the first bounce that does the job. And that's what we just saw. So the Dodgers trailing 4-0 going into the inning have scored a run. They have runners at first and third. One gun, say, line to center in the first inning. Yankee infield looking for the double play. One and all. Fran Say. And the tying run in the form of her husband at the plate. And he had a three run blast last night in the first inning. The 2 2 to say. He said, high in the air to be. Say, say, the 2 1 pitch of breaking pitch of beauty for a strike and a count two and two. And here you see a 2 1 pitch, as we said earlier, for him to be successful. Say doesn't think it's a strike. Umpire takes, makes a late call, but it's better to be late than make the wrong call. He thought, thought it was a strike. 2 2 pitch. Ball three, and the count is full. See, 
if Garvey goes here. Steve at first. Lopes the runner at third. And Garvey goes as Say hits the bounce toward the hole. Backhanded by Milburn as one play first base scooped out by Watson. And Lopes comes in to score as Garvey goes to second. So it's four to two. You see the 3-2 sinker. Milburn's playing up the middle. Gets to the ball. Only has a play at first. Doesn't make a strong throw, but Watson scoops it up for the second out. Two down. Garvey at second base and Dusty Baker lined to short in the second inning. Dusty 1-11 through 11 in the series. Dusty has been struggling as he put it to me for the last several weeks but with a 338 career batting average although look at him in postseason games that graphic things change and abruptly. Oh and two. Down he goes so he gets him on a breaking pitch and the Dodgers are finished in the third but they have the Yankee lead pick up two on three hits after three it's the Yankees four and the Dodgers two third Dodger pitcher of the day is Terry Forster coming on in relief as we go to the fourth inning Forster signed by the Dodgers as a free agent prior to the 78 season pitched extremely well in 78 but then underwent two elbow operations over the past couple of seasons limiting his use in both 79 and in 80 pitched in only nine games last season this year Terry in 21 during the regular season with a record of 0 and 1 and an ERA of 4.06 Willie Randolph with a triple and a home run to lead off in the fourth inning one and oh the count two and oh now three and oh the count. 3-2 to Randolph is high, so Willie is on. Larry Randolph Hello. drawing his sixth walk in the four games. His get on base percentage is just huge. Superb batting eye. Of course, he had an off year with a bat this year, but last year I think he was on like 43% of the time. And Still had a pretty good get on base percentage this year, even though, as you say, he hit only 232. Oh, well, he had 57 walks. And... Milburn at the plate, say in on the grass at third. Milburn tries to lay one down, pops it up, and Garvey tries to pull a say, what Ronnie did last night, and the ball bounds up and hits Steve apparently on the nose. But Garvey getting a hand as he goes back to his station at first base. Here you see Milburn trying to bunt a ball over his head. Not a very good ball to bunt. Where you want to throw it in a bunt situation, Garvey makes a great effort, just can't get to it, and you'll see the ball bounce up and hit him right somewhere in the, either the forehead or the face. Garvey back on the bag at first, holding Randolph aboard. Owen won the count. Say ready to charge from third. Milburn squares again, lays one down towards Say at third. And Ron has one play at first base as Lopes covers. And Randolph advances. One down. Randolph in scoring position now as Dave Winfield comes to the plate, still trying to get on track. He drew a walk in the first inning, bounced out in the third, and 0 for 11 in the series thus far. Often said when a hitter is in a slump, he does not see the ball well. Talk to any hitter that's, that's having a tough time in the play, they just don't see the release point when the ball comes out of the pitcher's hand. Sosa taking a piece of that one, and the count is one and one. There you saw him swinging a, a low fastball tailing away. Not a good pitch to hit. Winfield a chopper backhanded by Russell yeah. and they have Randolph trapped and Bill throws to third say running it back towards second makes the catch. Winfield has to hold it first. It's just incredible how they keep running on balls hit in front of the runner. Look at this. 
Now you just don't go on that. And it's a long run to throw to first, by the way, and Winfield has good speed, that loping stride. I think they should start practicing that play for next year. Two down with Winfield at first base. Randolph shaking his head, wondering how he could do it. It was that simple. And he hates himself, but they keep doing it. Jackson takes high for a ball, one and oh. Ball two. 2 0 pitch to Reggie. In there. Phillip. Pitches inside, Sosha's throw is not there in time, and Winfield with a stolen base. So with a count full on Reggie now, Winfield in scoring position. Look at that man's stride. That's what I meant. Randolph made it easy. The burden was on the Dodgers, on the Winfield grounder, was in the hole, Russell has a questionable arm. It's been his one problem as a shortstop through the years after moving in from center field where it began. Winfield gets down quickly. 3-2 to Jackson. He's inside. So Reggie dances on down the line to first. Second walk issued in the inning by Forster. Oscar. And Gamble. Oscar Gamble coming up. Gamble 0 for 2 today. Look at him Over against left handers. Winfield at second and Jackson at first. Want to know the count? And this is an un, this is an unusual move, mainly because the the Dodgers' other main reliever is Steve Howe, who's left-handed. You'd think that Pinella would come in the ball game. Obviously, they'd like to add to the I lead. I agree right with here. you, hundred percent. Foul at the plate. And that's not to say that Oscar, King, I know that the, the graphic said that he's 0 for 11 this year, and I've seen him get many hits off left handers, especially when he used to play with Cleveland because he played more often. But there's Lou. Seems to me you've got to go for the jugular. Man. Don't have time to wait for tomorrow. Well, you're not hurting yourself because Pinella, back in 78, made the outstanding defensive play, plays against the Dodger in that World Series and has played very well in right field. Kept a triple. From really a double from being a triple last night. Forrester again missing inside. Two and one. Fellow up next. Something to think about, Mr. Watson. Well, Terry Forrester knows that he has to get get Gamble out. This is this is the matchup you want. He doesn't want to face Watson. Three and one the count. If Gamble gets on. He said it's how in the bullpen there. Well, I'm not sure if that's how or wait a minute. Wait a minute. Right hander throwing in the Dodger pen Bobby Castillo. Oh, Castillo. Well, my point was that the that their dominant reliever is Steve Howell. Mm -hmm. If you make a move now you might see a left hander later. Gamble hits a ground ball toward the middle. Lopes is there and nobody at second base. So the bases are loaded. Russell went over to try to make the play. <laughs> leaving the base vacant. Maybe had no play at first. And Gamble with an infield single. So Watson will be coming up with the bases loaded. Yankees are pointing toward a record for men left on base. They left the bases loaded last inning. They face that possibility this inning. First baseman, Bob Watson. Jerry Royce in the foreground there with Lasorda in the background. Jerry will pitch tomorrow in game five. Lasorda going to stick with a left handed Forster against Watson. Rounded down to short. Russell shoveling the lopes, and again the Yankees leave the bases loaded. When you do this, what they have just done, as often as they have done it, third time in four innings, the bases loaded. They failed at every point to break the game open. 
inevitably you pay later on. We'll be back. Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, game four of the 1981 World Series. Al Michaels with Howard Cosell and Jim Palmer. The Yankees on top 4-2. The Yankees, though, in four innings have left eight men aboard. And the Dodgers come up here in the bottom of the fourth with Baker Monday. With Monday to lead things off, Guerrero and Sosha. Monday hit it on the nose in the second inning, but right at Oscar Gamble. Want to know the count? Look at that. It's like turnovers in football. That kind of statistic tells you a lot. Two and oh the count. The Yankees have not hit the Dodgers thus far, eight to five. Three and oh the count. Frazier up and throwing in the Yankee bullpen again. Russell to this point, giving up five hits, hasn't walked the man, has struck out two. And the pitch is outside, so Monday draws a walk on four pitches. And Pedro Guerrero coming up. And it seems to me Bob Lemon can't sit there today. Keep going back to the number of men they've left on base. The Dodgers have lived dangerously thus far today, but under the circumstances, very well. First inning, one in, bases filled, none out. Yankees settle for two. Guerrero takes low and inside for a ball. One to go to count. Two other times, bases filled, and one case settled for one, another case for none. This is something that rarely happens to Rick Russell, who has excellent control. As you look at Bob Lemon, Russell averaging only 1.3 walks per nine innings since the trade from Chicago. Those are figures with the Yankees. He walks Monday on four and has missed with two straight to Guerrero. Cerrone coming back behind the plate with a count 2 0 on Pedro. What do you think's happening to him, Jim? Trying to be too fine? I think anything but that. He's maybe be trying to make good pitches, but uh, two weeks in activity. That's it. Could be. Over here for a strike and the count two and one. Line on a hot five, driving Millborn out into left field. Monday pulling in at second. Here comes Lynn. Bob Lemon going after the mound here in the fourth inning. The Dodgers with runners at first and second and nobody out. Guerrero with a base hit here now two for two. Lemon looking to the pen and making the move. Here you see the ball by Melbourne. He does not adjust. Uh, you don't want to move on pitches because the batter knows, knows, will know what's coming, but Last inning and this inning, both times, Ruschel's gotten behind the batters, and he has not adjusted, has not moved over to the hole. That's Rudy May, who's been up with Frazier. He's coming on in relief in the fourth. Rudy May, out of the Yankee bullpen, came in last night in relief, worked three innings, gave up no runs and two hits, and he'll be facing Mike Sosha here in the bottom of the fourth inning. The Yankees on top, four to two. Sosha, 0 for 1, fly to left field in the second inning. Mike, the number 8 hitter. So we'll see what Lasorda has in mind here. Pitcher Forrester due up next. Dodger bullpen is busy. With Tom Needenfuhr throwing. Yankee infield expecting the bunt. With Watson and Rodriguez in shallow. The Dodgers have Monday at second. Guerrero at first and nobody out. Sosa lays it down. Nice bunt. May looks at third. Goes to first and a fine stretch by Randolph to get the out there as the runners advance. The Dodgers with a tying run now at second base. And Reggie Smith coming up to bat for Forster.
Reggie Smith undergoing a shoulder surgery, limiting his playing time this year. As a matter of fact, he played defensively only twice on both occasions at first base, not at all in right field, his normal position. And up here in the fourth inning with Dodgers at second and third, the Yankee infield is back. They'll give up a run on the ground ball. One down. All in one. Jim, you walk Smith. Go for the double play. Well, I would not this early in the ball game. You're in the fourth inning. You really don't want to put the the winning run on first base. Now, I would say if you were a run or two down, you probably gamble and do that, which we've seen twice in the World Series before. But right here, you have Rudy May, who has an excellent breaking ball. He's a strikeout pitcher. We'll probably see the curveball right here. And like I said, it's a high fastball. High fastball, right? He swung right through it. <laughs> Maybe that's why I never got Reggie Smith out. But really, Reggie Smith from the left side, who when I faced him, was basically a low fastball hitter. That when his shoulder as well is the kind of a pitch that he liked he, from a, from a left-handed pitcher much better high fastball hitter than he than he was from the other side of the plate. But Rudy does have him in a hole and Reggie's got to protect the plate. This is where you might see a hitter swing at a pitch just a little bit out of the strike zone. And Smith has gone on a breaking ball. Very so good. on three pitches down he goes. Very good James. Well, don't give me the credit, Rudy May. He has an excellent curveball, as I said last night, and he just made he, he made him aware of the fastball by throwing away, and then he came in with a good curveball, just a little bit off the plate, and Reggie chased it. More than that, the damaged shoulders have hampered his swing. You're much better off percentage-wise pitching to him. Lopes has been a pest. He hits effectively to the opposite field. He's a contact hitter. Not much of a double play man. He gets the ball extremely hard to win. Lopes has been a particular pass the last two games. Two hits last night. One for two today. Drove in a run in the third inning. Two out. Monday at third. Guerrero at second. A strike to Davey, and it's 0 and 1. I think that's the reason why the Dodgers have been playing better. Lopes has been getting on base. When we talk about for the Yankees, Willie Randolph's very important to their offense. Davey Lopes has been getting a lot of fastballs to hit. And again, you saw Rudy May make a good pitch with his fastball. And if you want to get Davey Lopes out, I would think you'd want to do it with a breaking ball. Lopes hits a breaking ball on the ground to short. Milburn with a throw to first and in time to retire the side. So both clubs threatening the fourth inning, but both come up empty. The Dodgers, no runs, one hit, and lead runners at second and third. As Larry Milburn makes the play and throws out Lopes. The Dodgers have now stranded five through four and will move to the fifth inning in game four at Dodger Stadium. The score remains the Yankees four and the Dodgers two. Manager Bob Lemon has seen another Yankee base running mistake today. This one by Willie Randolph, reviving memories of last night. I talked to Bob about that earlier. Lem, one day you're a hero, the next day you're a bum. You managed a team that made base running mistakes. <laughs> what do you say about it? Well, uh, they're human too, you know. Not all George's horses win either. And it was just one of those days we should have won. Uh, we should have won the ball game, but sometimes. No matter how good you play, you lose, and no matter how bad you play, you win. Not all of George's horses win either. Great line. Nothing bothers him. <laughs> Yankees on top as we go to the fifth inning. Tom Needenfuhrer, who pitched very well in relief in game one on Tuesday, working on Cerrone. And the count is 1-0. Needenfuhrer. One year of professional baseball called up by the Dodgers in mid August, double A at San Antonio. And in the World Series, as Cerrone hits a high fly ball to center field, Guerrero camping underneath, one away. Dean Fuhrer, the other night, remarkable poise, comes in, gives up a base hit to the first man he faces, and then sets down the next nine in succession. Well, he attributed that fact to, to the the ability to get the breaking ball over. Uh, everybody knows that's ever watched him pitch that he has a, a lot of ability. Good live fastball. 
But the other night he threw some excellent sliders. And when you can do that, when you have a good fastball to go with a good breaking pitch, and you get them both over, it makes it a lot easier. And he did that the other night in Yankee Stadium. Working here now on Rodriguez, who fouls it away, and the count is 0 and 1. Popped up. Russell. Two down. So Rudy May will be coming up, I think, for the first time. Last night, May came on, and even though Rudy was in there when the Dodgers scored what turned out to be the winning run, he kept the Yankees in the game. Winning run last night coming in on what was a double play in the fifth inning. May doing a fine job last night and again here. And Rudy going for the downs on one. One must presume at least three reasons why Lemon put in Rudy May. First, Sosha, the left-hander, was up at the time. Second, as discussed, Reggie Smith would have to bat right-handed against him. And thirdly, he wanted a veteran in there. May in the air to left field. Baker going over into the corner. Dusty has room. So for the first time today, the Yankees are retired in order. And in the middle of the fifth inning, 4-2 Yanks back at Dodger Stadium after this commercial and a word from our local stations. Johnson's Baby Shampoo presents Bucky Dent and Bill Russell. My hair is a mess after every game. Same here. So I have to shampoo every day. Yeah, but shampooing that much worries me. Then don't use anything harsh. Use Johnson's. It's gentle enough to use every day. Johnson's doesn't dry out your hair. Leaves it clean, thick, and healthy looking. Would Johnson do that for me? No tears, no runs, no <laughs> errors. Johnson's baby shampoo. It's gentle enough to use every day. From Johnson & Johnson. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning at Dodger Stadium with Bill Russell to lead off, followed by Garvey and Say. Rudy May on in relief for New York with the Yankees ahead 4-2. to two. Russell taking low for a ball. Bill is grounded to third and struck out. May in relief of Rick Russell. Popped in the air, shallow right field. Randolph sprinting out, waving Jackson away, but Reggie says, I'll take it, and does. One away. Pitchers tomorrow Steve. in game five. Same matchup that we had in game one. It will be Gidry and Royce in a big day of sports on ABC, beginning with the New York City Marathon. 10.30 in the morning. Eastern and Pacific, 9.30 Central Time, through the five boroughs of New York. Sports beat to follow. And the World Series, Game 5. New York City Marathon on tomorrow. First time that live coverage has been provided start to finish in the United States. 1-0 on Garvey. Line to left field and toward the corner. For a base hit and maybe more. Garvey taking the turn as Gamble gets it back in. So Steve winds up at second with a double. They simply cannot handle that man. Three for three today. He has taken over as the hottest hitter in this series. Well, Rudy May got Russell out on the changeup. Here's another one. Garvey hits it on the end of the bat, hooks it right down the left field corner. No chance for Gamble to make a play on it. Garvey now with. Eight hits in 14 trips in the series, and say 0 for 2, standing in. 0 and 1. One and one, the count. Yankee bullpen. Ron Davis throwing. Ron has not pitched. In this series, the way he pitched during the season. And, well, he's been a good middle reliever. May not be on the top of his form. Say he hits it in the left field for a base hit. Garvey around third. He'll come in to score. And it's four to three. And the Dodgers keep coming on. Opportunities that the Yankees blew keep adding up in retrospect. And you could sense the Dodgers coming on. Now it's a one-run ball game. 
And Lemon going to the mound. Say has driven in two of the three runs. Davis in the pen, each club with eight hits, and the call goes out for Ron Davis. So Lemon has made his move. Davis coming in here in the fifth inning. Say at first base is the tying run. Dusty Baker will be coming to the plate with the Yankees ahead 4-3. We'll be right back. Tomorrow, for the first time ever, live network start-to-finish coverage of the New York City Marathon. And on ABC Sports Beat, Howard Cosell one-on-one -on -one with the man behind the success and turmoil of the New York Yankees, George Steinbrenner, Patton in pinstripes. Plus, a look at the striking beauty who might just be the best lady golfer in the world. And the World Series continues. Quite a day tomorrow on ABC. Well, on Sports Beat, Patton and Pinstripes, Jan Stevenson, the fair lady of the fairways, fairways, and if everything works, Ingemar Johansson after he runs that New York City marathon. It's built more strongly than Alfalfa Mike. <laughs> right. Ingemar may win that thing tomorrow, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be originating Sports Beat live from right here, the World Series. Ron Davis still loosening up. Dusty Baker getting ready to come up with one out of the fifth inning. Yankees have led all the way. Two in the first, one in the second, one in the third. But the Dodgers picked up two in the third to have the advantage. Got a run over here in the fifth inning on a double by Garvey and a single by Say. And the tying run, Say is at first base with one away. We've talked about character in teams before, but... Ever a team is showing character, it's the Dodgers. 0 oh 1. And quickly ahead on Baker, nothing in two now. Ball strike three. Baker really upset over Harvey's ball. As Davis gets a strikeout and the second out of the inning. How'd that look to you, Jim? Well, I've been watching, <laughs> watching all day, and here you see a fastball, and it runs in a little bit. Dusty Baker thought it was inside. Doug, Hart, Doug Harvey's been really having a small strike zone all afternoon. Hasn't been giving the pitchers too many pitches. Took a long time to call it. But I guess he felt it was a strike. With two down, Rick Monday. If he did, would have an investigation. <laughs> 0 and 1. Well, as we said, Monday, there, there is no. Here you see Davis pitching to Rick Monday. There's no mystery about Ron Davis. He threw, throws very few breaking balls. He's going. They know what he's going to throw. He's coming right at him with with fastballs. And as Hank Bauer, I said this before, once said, when you get two strikes on you. When the ball's close, you better be swinging. Gets the corner, and the count one and two. And here's a fastball in the outside corner. One of the difficulties that the hitters are having right now is really you have a shadow. You have the pitcher in the sun, and you have the batter in the shade. It makes it much more difficult. Rick Monday also said that a, a side arming right handed pitcher comes out of the stands in, in left center field. And down goes Monday. So Davis comes out of the bullpen, strikes out Baker and Monday. And the Dodgers in the fifth inning settle for the one run. A run, two hits, leave one, through five full. Yankees four, Dodgers three. Game four, the Yankees leading in the series. Two games to one, leading here through five. 4-3 New York, Tom Neatenfuer, the fourth Dodger pitcher. Bob Welch started, didn't get anybody out. Dave Golds came on in the first. Terry Forster came on in the fourth. And now Neatenfuer, who has faced 13 men in his two World Series appearances and retired 12 of them. Set the side down in order in the fifth and goes to work on the top of the Yankee order in the sixth inning with Randolph Milburn and Winfield coming up Willie Randolph takes inside Randolph 
Perfect day thus far. Tripled in the first, scored a run, hit a home run in the second, drew a walk in the fourth. He's walked six times in the series thus far. Bouncer to short. Easy play for Bill Russell. Not so easy, though. Garvey can't save him either. Steve missing the tag. And arguing with a call, the first base umpire, Rich Garcia. That time, Lasorda will join in. You see, as Howard said earlier, the only thing wrong with Russell at shortstop, sometimes he makes some, some erratic throws, and you saw in the replay, Randolph reacts well to get underneath the tag. Can't really tell from that angle whether no, he was No, you out really or not. can't, and in point of fact, the umpire was not that well positioned. Like a referee in boxing, behind a fighter, belaboring another fighter, but not able to see the degree of punishment being administered. In any event, he's safe, and that's that. Tommy, of course, loses the argument, but gets the crowd stirred up. As Larry Milburn gets ready to stand in, Milburn, one for two, plus a sacrifice. May possibly see another sacrifice here. Say expecting one. Ron in on the grass at third. Throw over to first to drive Randolph back. Lemon may be. He may be of a mind to let Milburn hit. Maybe hit and run even. Bunch foul. Not then. 0 and 1. Why? Because Winfield is going so badly. Here's still another angle on that tag. Let's see if we can see him. It's so hard. So hard. Russell, of course, charged with an error. Dodgers have now made four in the series. The Yankees just won. Milburn squares again. They pitch out, but Randolph not going anywhere. One and one the count. Funny foul. It's a foul ball. Then scooting out into fair territory, so the count is one and two. Popped up, shallow left field, and a play for Dusty Baker as he crosses the line. One away in the sixth inning, and Dave Winfield coming up. So they were going for the bunt originally, and they couldn't execute. Heard those words before. Winfield 0 for 2 today. Two hits in his last 30 at bats going back to the league championship series and the World Series still hitless hitless in 12 trips. You said Willie here Jim. Well Eden Fuhrer has a big windup. I suppose if he's going to be running it would be easier to steal off this kind of delivery it takes a lot longer to get rid of the ball than and Goltz or Welch. I would think that the way Winfield's hitting, you might want to hit in front. Might want to have the infielders moving a little bit, open up a hole for Dave. Want to know the count. Randolph not moving here. And a breaking pitch missing for ball two. We're talking about execution, excuse me, Al. As you did, Howard, the, the failure of Milborn to punt him over. I think any time a manager ever takes over a new ball club, what does he say he's going to do? I'm going to work on the fundamentals. And one of them, probably one of the most important, especially when you don't have a DH, is bunting. Getting that guy over, getting him in scoring position. Close play as Randall has to dive back into the bag. <laughs> he's gotten two good calls from his point of view. I'll tell you that was close. No, he was in. Two and all on Winfield. Trying to shake the slump. It's a high fly ball to left field and deep down the line into the corner. Dusty Baker all the way back and makes the catch. Randolph tagging and moves in the second. So an alert play by Randolph. Winfield driving Baker all the way back to the low fence in the corner. And Randolph tagging at first base. And able to advance. We talk about the big ballpark in Yankee Stadium. 
here at this ballpark works to the Dodgers advantage as Baker gets back to the wall the ball would have been easily in the left field pavilion in Yankee Stadium there's Steve Howe getting ready to throw in the Dodger bullpen looking ahead when the Dodgers come up in the bottom of the inning Needham Fuhrer is due up third they are going to walk Reggie Jackson now and take their chances with Oscar Gamble Gamble looks at a strike interesting Rambo making a very heads up play by tagging at first and going to second but what Willie did was he took the bat out of Reggie's hands the intentional walk as the Dodgers Take their chances with Gamble. Need to be quickly ahead at 0 and 2. A fastball clocked at 91 miles per hour. This kid looks better and better. And it's lined in the right center, so the strategy backfires. Randolph around third comes in to score. Jackson is on his way to third. Strong throw, but not in time. Reggie is in safely, and the Yankees now lead it five to three. Let's see how Jackson is. He started limping. He drove himself into this right there. He beat it, yes. Took a lot of guts on his part. Pedro Guerrero with a strong throw into third. But Reggie going all the way with two down. And in there. Five to three Yankees with Jackson at third, Gamble at first, and Bob Watson. 0 for 1 today with a sacrifice fly and a walk. 0 and 1. Out of play. Still 1 and 2. On Watson. Bob's wife, Carol. Jackson at third, Gamble at first. The run and any subsequent runs would be unearned because of the throwing error that started the inning by Russell. Breaking pitch just missing as Needham Fewer starts off the mound. Two and two. Looks like a pretty good pitch. But I'm not the umpire. I know if I was pitching, I'd certainly want it. The 2 2 pitch is lined to left field. Baker on the move. Dusty diving, but they say no. They say he tracked it. It's a base hit as Jackson comes in to score. The throw goes to second. Gamble winds up at third. Baker will plead his case with the left field foul line umpire, Nick Pelosi. And here comes Lasorda for the second time in the inning. But the Yankees. Now lead it six to three. Let's see if we can take another look at this one. There it is. <laughs> How did it look to you, Jim? I couldn't really tell. You know, the umpire was a lot closer even than the replay. Pelosi on the line in left field. Looking at it live, I thought he trapped it. I thought Pelosi made the right play. I'm not, so. I'm not so sure after watching the replay, though. I thought it. I thought I saw it touch green. Look at a rear view now. Well, that that way I couldn't tell, but the other way, and it's watching it live with you, Al. I thought he trapped it. Suddenly, though, two line shots off this young pitcher. One ball left. Slow it down. I think he trapped. I did too. Well, you mentioned the two line drives. He got Oscar Gamble 0 and 2. And as you just said earlier, pitchers are human. And Rudy May hung a curveball to say to get him out of the ball game. Neither needing fewer. Got to be on. And here you're. Gamble is going to come out for pinch runner Brown. Number 13, Bobby Brown. Another look. Okay, we blew the picture up. I'm sorry. He trapped it. That's the call as the Yankees lead it six to three, and Rick Sarone at the plate. It's a fly ball to right center field. 
Rick Monday coming on and makes the catch. But in the inning, the error by Russell very costly. As the Yankees come up with a couple of runs, they're both unearned on two hits. Leave a couple. And at the end of five and a half, the Yankees lead the Dodgers six to three. Another record crowd shows up for game four and is treated to more thrills, spills, and chills than even the night before. The debut of Reggie Jackson sets the tarred pace. Watson's sixth inning line drive is the game's 18th hit, and it produces the ninth run of the slugfest. But Dusty Baker interrupts the relentless drama to argue the trap ball ruling made by Nick Colosi, and the Dodgers' tempestuous manager joins the uprising. Nick, he caught the ball. Nick, I swear to God, he caught the ball, Nick. You weren't even out there to see it. He knows whether he I caught know, the ball. He caught it. All right, then he thinks he did. Okay, but haven't you ever missed one? Oh, well, then you missed that one. Are you going to see it on the... Are you going to see it? How can you see that? You're going to see it later on? I'll tell you what, you're going to see it on the TV and you'll see it. Huh? That ball did not hit the ground. He said he caught it. He ought to know. Probably even Dusty doesn't know for sure, but one thing's certain. It'll go in the books as an RBI single for Bob Watson, and Lasorda will go away unhappy. All right, Jim, and for the Yankees, Dave Winfield moves from center to left. Bobby Brown, who went into pinch run for Gamble after Oscar had reached third in the top of the inning, stays in the game in center. Yankees ahead 6-3 to three in the bottom of the sixth inning. Pedro Guerrero leading things off for Los Angeles. Very interesting that he put Bobby Brown as Tom. Well, sort of obviously upset over the two calls. No in the question top of the about inning. that, but... This is curious, Jim. He puts in Bobby Brown, who has played so sparingly, instead of Jerry Mumphrey in center field, who's been his regular center fielder all year and is a gifted fly chaser. I have no idea. Got an opinion? Guerrero. It's a fly ball to right center. Bobby Brown is there. No problem with this one. One away. Oh, he's a good fielder, Brown. But he's deprecating his defensive ability, but it's kind of odd, I think. Well, you'd think Jerry Mumphrey would have started the ball game, considering he's one of the two guys in the Yankees that can run. And he finally had a right-handed pitcher. And Bob Welch, he also is the highest batting average for the Yankees this year, but I think they're a little bit disappointed with his hitting so far here in the series. Now he was, he, we pointed out, he was the out man last night. He, Oh, it balanced well, exactly the wrong way. So should the batter. Low and inside, ball one. That's Dave Stewart throwing in the Dodger bullpen. He'll come on in the top of the seventh inning. So should batting here, the number eight hitter. Neem Fuhr do up next, no doubt won't hit. And as yet, the Dodgers have not sent anybody out into the on deck circle. Although Jay Johnstone now has a bat in the dugout. Two and all the count on Sosha. Even with nobody on. Deals 2-0, and misses for ball three. Sosa aboard on four. So Mike at first base with one out, and it is Jay Johnstone who emerges from the Dodger dugout to bat for Needenfuer. Johnstone, despite the low average during the regular season, had three pinch hit home runs this year. Tops in the lead. I was sure we'd see him today, even if Rushell had pitched very well and been able to stay in, in there, because his career batting average against Rushell was 432 with a 727 slugging percent. Davis having trouble with his control as Jim Palmer has stated. It's this one in for a strike on one. We saw Johnstone in the first game come in and single crisply off Gossage to right field and then he lined out in the second game again off Gossage. 
One and one the count. On the subject of gossip, it might not be long before we see the goose in the Yankee bullpen, but not at the moment. Johnstone fouls it away. This team keeps fighting back. Absolutely no quit in them. They established it so vividly during the previous playoff series. A lot of spunk. The one two pitch to Johnstone. Hit high in the air to oh, right center field. Bobby Brown looking up. Johnstone for the Pitching the way he pitched during the season. And this team, what carry? The Los Angeles Dodgers. Well, if you said you didn't, where you didn't want to throw a ball would be out over the plate. Johnstone still has to hit, but as you said, he's got a quick bat, good pinch hitter. It's it way back in right center. So the Dodgers. Keep trying to get up off the deck. They trailed 4-0, made it 4-2, then 4-3. Yankees got two runs in the top of the inning to make it 6-3. It's now 6-5. The crowd wants Johnstone to reemerge from the dugout, and here he comes. The Dodgers now trail 6-3 in the sixth, a perfect spot for pinch hitter extraordinaire, Jay Johnstone. Ron Davis has put himself in a hole with a walk, but now gets ahead on the count. One ball, two strikes. Ironically, Johnstone was a member of the 78 Yankees, so he's the only Dodger to play on a World Series winner. So the salute for Jay, who makes it 6-5, to five, and Davey Lopes, the batter. From a pitcher's perspective, I mean, Davis obviously threw his best fastball out of the plate, and you have to give Johnson credit, but the thing that hurts you the most is the base on ball to a three-run lead. And that's been his problem in recent days. Well, we talked last night about the base running errors. The things that managers hate the most are the mental errors. And, and I know part of walking people are physical, but it's also mental. It's just something you can't afford to do when you get a three-run lead. He's behind He's here. behind 2-0, and, oh, and he is digging his own grave. And Lasorda, at the same time, is still thinking about, while his hope quickens because of the Johnstone homer, he's still thinking about those two umpire calls in the last Yankee turn at bat. Lopes taking all the way, looks at a strike, and it's two and one. That's Frazier, who was up very early today, throwing again in the Dodger bullpen. That's Steve Howe. He'll be coming on a pitch in the top of the seventh inning. Turned out to be some ball game in the pattern of yesterdays. Lopes popping it in the air. Shallow right field. Jackson is coming on. Reggie having problems. Can't make the catch. Watson picks it up and Lopes is in second. Reggie played that ball as if he never saw it. So easy to second guess. Look at that. Hit him in the chest. He didn't see it. So easy to second guess. Put your best defensive outfield in there, beginning three runs ahead in the bottom of the sixth. Bill Russell, a batter, a chopper, foul outside third. Mammoth break for the Dodgers as Lopes is at second. One away in the bottom of the sixth inning. Yankees ahead six to five. With Reggie limping, you had a wonder. Out an outfield of Brown and Mumphrey and Winfield. Well, it's easy to second guess, isn't it, Jim? Well, bring back memories of the 66 girl series where in the game I pitched against Kofax, Davis dropped the two fly balls. After he dropped the second one, he picked it up and threw it about 10 rows over their dugout. Very tough 
sky here sometimes in Los Angeles, especially uh, as you saw with Reggie. Well, Once you don't see the ball, it's very hard to pick it up again because you're looking right into the sun. Had his glasses on, did everything right except catch it. Lawrence is going to third, and he'll make it uncontested. Davis, what? Unbelievable. When did you last see a Yankee team make good so base many runners. mistakes? Well, good base runners always say it's easier to steal third. You don't have a first baseman holding you as close as you do at the second base position. The 0-2 pitch with the infield in is fouled away. You had to have a feeling about these Dodgers, the way they kept coming back. of old striking out Baker and Monday comes apart and unglued here in the bottom of the sixth inning as Frazier comes out of the Yankee pen. Davis now has but a fragile one run lead and with Davy Lopes up the glare of the October Sun claims its number one son Reggie Jackson. Lopes ends up at second and the sounds of a Dodger rally are loud and clear. After Lopes steals one of his 10 straight postseason bases, Bill Russell greets an 0-2 pitch. Los Angeles gets its sixth run. The Dodgers, who seemed out of it at 4-0 and then 6-3, have fought back to tie. Now the burden is on the young man who pitched well last night. Who got the bad breaks on the ball of our chops by first Garvey and then Guerrero. But this suddenly has become a series in which every key mistake is being made by the Yankee ball club. And it's a fan series. Never mind the mistakes. They get the excitement they want out of it. In this case, the excitement goes for the Dodger fans because the game is in Los Angeles. There is Davis with Joe out the belly, the third base coach in the foreground as Frazier completes his warm-ups. Saw that aerial shot from the Goodyear blip. Dodger Stadium really rocking. It's been a quiet crowd early. And of all people, dominated Al, of all people to be coming up, the man who's three for three, Steve Garvey. And eight for 14 in the World Series. Russell certainly atoned Jim for his throw on Randolph. That he did. The big play is a stolen base. Makes you play your infield in, puts the pressure on the pitcher. And as you said, pitchers are human. We, we've seen that all afternoon. They're just not making good pitches. The ball that Russell hit was a fastball up in the middle of the plate. Davis throws that pitch low and away. Might be a different story, but he wasn't able to do it today. Time had been called. No pitch there. Garvey had stepped out. The count's still 0 1. You go back to last night's ball game. Frazier pitched very well. You, you said they had a couple of the high choppers, but the, what set up that whole inning was the walk to say. He tried to throw him a 3 2 breaking ball, missed, walked him. Guerrero punched the ball over Rodriguez's head. A beauty, 0 2. 
Short has been steaming the whole inning, top and bottom. And he just hopes by talking to Doug Harvey that maybe he'll get a pitch once in a while. Might not be the next one, but sooner or later. Harvey gets under it, lifts it in the air to left field. Winfield is there. That's the second down. So they get Garvey for the first time today. And it brings up Say. Say four for 13 in the series. And the count is full. Howard just mentioned the Dodgers coming to life last night. Prior to last night's game, the Dodgers in 12 postseason games had a cumulative team batting average of only 204. The five runs, 11 hits last night. Six runs, 10 hits already today. Russell will be going on the pitch, and the 3-2 delivery is in high in the air to left field. Winfield underneath this one. And that's that for the Dodgers in the sixth inning. But the Dodgers in the sixth come up with three runs. Two on the pitch over by Johnstone. Russell driving in the tying run. Pick up a couple of hits, one error. And at the end of six full, Yankees six, Dodgers six. Through six, Yankees six, and the Dodgers six. And Steve Howe becomes the fifth Dodger pitcher. Well started, Goltz, Forster, Needenfuer, now Howe, who pitched briefly in game two, came on in the eighth inning Wednesday night. Got Winfield to fly out, but then gave up a single to Pinella and a base hit to Nettles. He'll go to work here on Aurelio Rodriguez. Frazier, the pitcher, is due up next. Nobody yet out in the on-deck circle. And then Willie Randolph will hit third in the inning. In the Yankee bullpen, you've got Gossage, the right-hander, and Tommy John, who is the starter in game two, the left-hander. Who has his game face on? You would think, you would suspect that John is just down there throwing between starts at this point, but maybe not. Well, huh? it's a big gamble because Gossage has said he doesn't mind pitching two days in a row, but he doesn't like to do it. Rodriguez starts things with a base hit in the left center field. Guerrero with a long run, and Rodriguez will try to stretch it to throw into Russell. The nail it. Guerrero was over in right center. They left him a gap there as Baker moves back toward left. A long way to go to come up with the ball in the gap, and Rodriguez, with not very good foot speed, gets thrown out. Well, the first base coach is a man named Ferraro. He was involved with sending a runner home against Kansas City, he kept his job, but moved from third to first. I don't know about now. Frazier hitting for himself and trying to bunt his way on. Owen won the count. Rodri Rodriguez markedly slow of foot. Everybody knows it. See, he hesitates right at first. Did not come out of the box. Thinking double. Bounce to the right side and a nice stop by Garvey. He'll do it himself. Steve over toward the line. The guard against the extra base hit. And making a nice play to take care of Frazier. Nice play by Steve. And he does it himself, the safe way. Willie Randolph coming up. Randolph has been on each time today. Triple in the first, homered in the second. Walked in the fourth, and then got aboard on the big error by Russell in the sixth inning. That led to two Yankee runs. To right field. Monday coast in. That's that for the Yankees. No runs, one hit. Nobody left through six and a half. It remains Yankees six, Dodgers six. Back in Los Angeles after this commercial. And a word from our local stations. Well, KC was winning. 
Hank Aaron was beginning, one Robbie going out, one coming in. Kiner and Midget Goodell, the Thumper and Mel Parnell, and Ike was the only one winning down in Washington. I'm talking baseball, Lazuski Campanella, talking baseball, the man and Bobby Feller, the Scooter, the Barber, and the Duke. They knew them all from Boston to Dubuque. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. And here you're going to see the tag by Russell on the attempted double. Rodriguez slides way early, does not go to the inside of the bag. You can see his head kind of going into the dirt. Russell has time to tag him before. If he went to the inside of the bag, he might have had a better chance to be safe. Already well, thrown out trying to stretch it, leading off in the top of the seventh as we go now to the bottom of the seventh inning with Dusty Baker facing George Frazier. The game tied at six and it's fouled away. Baker to be followed by Monday and Guerrero. Slow chopper. Going to be a tough play. Milburn bare hands throws. No play at first. So Dusty Baker, this thing started in the bottom of the seventh inning with a base hit. And as you look at it again, the pattern continues. It began last night with the ballpark working for the Dodgers. Either Baltimore chops or one like that. And then somehow they have the capacity to capitalize. Whereas the Yankees have not only not capitalized, but have made a succession of mistakes that have been simply shocking for a Yankee ball club. If the Yankee owner explodes, I think in this case it may be understandable to many. Rick Monday, who, as you can see, did not have a sacrifice this season up there with Baker at first base and nobody out. Rodriguez has to guard against the bunt at third, but Rick is up there to swim away and takes him to dirt. So Ron had trouble finding it, but no advance. Baker remaining at first base. As Mrs. Monday, Terry Monday. There is Rick. Really got great personal charm. There is Greg Nettles on the bench again today. I think you'll see him in there tomorrow. Well, he took batting practice and not hit the ball like he can. Didn't seem to be bothering him too much. In the air to center field, Brown circled around it and can't make the play. Baker rounding second as Jackson comes up with the ball. Dusty will go to third and Monday in at second. Now you tell me, go back to what I said a couple of innings ago. Why isn't Jerry Montre in center field? Everything's catching up to these Yankee mistakes today. Here he is. It's not hit too, too well to center. Brown takes a step back. Can't recover. Makes a, tries to make a nice effort. Just doesn't get to the ball. Tries to make a shoestring catch. Reggie heads up play, backing him up. Baker had the hold between first and second to see if the ball would be caught. So Monday was running up his back. Meanwhile, Guerrero will be walked intentionally to load the bases with nobody out and bring up Sosha. And Sosha, good contact hitter, a man who struck out only 18 times all season and figures to put the ball in play coming up. Well, I have checked. You were with me. There is absolutely nothing wrong with Jerry Mumford. I agree with Jim. I can't figure it out either. Can't figure out the reasoning. Levin's going to go to the mound. Gossage in the bullpen. Tommy John was also throwing. He's going to John. He said the left-hander. Is that John? They want to know. Do they want me? You could see him. You could see him in the bullpen saying, "Me? Do they want me?" And the answer is yes. Tommy John on the mound. You got to put this whole thing in perspective. The Yankee pitching staff has failed today. Russell couldn't do the job. May did it, but only for a short time. But the key was Ron Davis's failure to hold for two or three innings because everything Lemon's now doing has been predicated upon the fact that he didn't want to bring Gossage in too soon for Goose. 
He had hoped to get to a situation where he could use Goose for two innings. He didn't. Meanwhile, now Tommy John. The Dodgers counter with pinch hitter Steve Yeager batting for Sosha and looking at a strike. 0 1. The base is loaded with nobody out. Bottom of the seventh inning, game tied 6 6. Yankee infield playing in. Yeager lining it to right field. Jackson is there. It should score Baker. Dusty tags a third on his way home. The Dodgers have the lead. would be there to do the job. The man who told you yesterday that he wants out because he hasn't had the opportunity to play. So Jaeger with a sacrifice fly and that is very important to the Dodgers right now in as much as they've gone through their bullpen and that keeps Steve Howe in the game. Whereas Lasorda might have had a decision to make if Jaeger had let's say bounced into a 1-2-3 double play or popped out. Now look how this unsettles the Yankees pitching staff in terms of the remainder of the series. Does this wipe John out of a... Now up there to butt, lays it down to Rodriguez at third. He'll make the play at first. Randolph covers, runners advance to second and third with two down. Does this effort today wipe John out of another starting shot, Jim? I would doubt it. I think that Bob Lemon, when bringing him in, was hoping that they would stay with Sosha. Maybe he'd get an out because he knew how was... How is coming up next, and the Dodgers may have to let him hit. But as it turns out now, I would think that you'd only see Tommy John pitch this inning. They have to go to Gossage. He hasn't pitched in a couple of days anyway. Probably could use the work. One and the count. I think the biggest Yankee fear is that Gossage has said many times, doesn't mind pitching back-to-back -back days, but not three innings. Anything over that really tires his arm. Blocked by Sarone. Two and all the count. Tommy John making his first relief appearance since 1979. Came out in relief May the 1st of 79 at Anaheim. First base open and Bill Russell on deck. Lopes gets the green light, hits a chopper, and Rodriguez has no play. It's eight to six. The whole thing has become absurd. The Dodgers have the most look at Tommy, the most patented attack I've ever seen. I talked about Seaver in geology. Hit the ball straight down on that play around home plate. You got a base hit. Here you say a sinker. It's funny. <laughs> Watch where it hits. Dick, bang. Well, we've seen the inning was started by Dusty Baker hitting a topper. <laughs> Again on a good pitcher by Frazier. John made a good pitch. Russell takes outside, 1-0. It's a tough pitch to defense. But I think that the whole point here is that, especially today's game, that it illustrates that the Yankees' bullpen is not invincible, that Lemon has to use Gossage sparingly because he can't trust the rest of his bullpen. And going into this series, they felt that Davis and Gossage would do the job they've done during the playoffs in the season. Gives them a lot of leeway to use them in many different ways. It's 3-0. Mary Ann Russell, Bill Russell's wife. Three and all the count. Will he take it all the way and looks at a strike? Guerrero is at third. I tell you, after, first. after this World Series, you know, they called the bunt game Billy Ball with a lot of other things. I don't know what you call this, except Dodger Ball. That's a strike. Matty Alou Ball. <laughs> on the move and the pitch is grounded to short. Milburn has to play it at first and in time there to retire the side. And in the seventh inning the Los Angeles Dodgers come up with a couple of runs 
three hits and leave two. We'll go to the eighth with the Dodgers in front, eight to six. For the Dodgers now, as we move to the eighth inning, Daryl Thomas takes over in center field. He'll bat in Rick Monday's spot, the number six spot. Pedro Guerrero moves from center over to right and adjusts the glasses. Steve Yeager, who delivered the sacrifice fly to drive in the tie-breaking run, stays in the game back of the plate. And with the Dodgers in front, eight to six, Larry Milburn to lead things off to be followed by Winfield and Jackson. Steve Howe, his game to win. Starts with a strike. On one. Line to center, right at Thomas. One out. Darrell tested immediately, and Howe goes to work now on Dave Winfield. I'm thinking of poor George Frazier. He's got to be shell shot. Comes in last night, Jim. Pitches beautifully, but two Baltimore chops get rid of him. Comes in today, pitches Dusty Baker beautifully on the Dodger infield hit as you look at Winfield. And then a fly ball to center field, and Bobby Brown's out there, and it becomes a double. How would you like that to happen? It's happened many times. Yeah. It's just circumstance a lot of the times. A lot of times you make good pitches and you're not always rewarded. For them. A lot of times you make a bad pitch. And as we saw right there, a line drive the center fielder for an out. Winfield heading into the air to deep right center field. Daryl Thomas all the way back, and it's simply a 390 foot out. So Winfield, who drove Baker to the wall in the sixth inning, drives Thomas to the track in the eighth. Two down. He hits more fly balls close to the fence, but not over than anyone I've ever seen. Well, Thomas can play a lot of positions, and he has a lot of speed. Got back to that ball easily. Makes the basket catch, as he's prone to do. And with two down, here's Reggie Jackson. Two singles, two walks. Been aboard four times. Two particularly good pitches to the first two hitters, but he has not, as Ron Davis did, walked anybody with a two run lead. 1 0. To deep right center field. To get it. And Reggie Jackson gets aboard for the fifth time as he'll move it all the way around. A home run for Jackson, who loves this ballpark. Series home runs at Dodger Stadium in Reggie's career. They can't come up there. There's a long, long drive to deep left going and gone. Jackson is homer to the opposite field. One and one the count. Two out. Nobody on. Fly ball hit the left center. It's way Good back. Bye. It is gone. Into the left center field pavilion. Reggie Jackson. Determined to walk no one. Sutton serves up another fat pitch to Jackson, who jumps all over it for a vicious clout high off the foul pole screen and right. You really need a, a big blast is what you need to get something going to shake up the bat rack. There it goes. He really sat on it, and that's what he wanted to do, and he hasn't reached first base yet. He just now touches it. It's going to take him 20 minutes to make a round trip. Mirror, mirror on the wall, which star glitters brightest of them all? Is it Reggie Jackson who got sweet revenge against Bob Welch by pulverizing a fastball to close out the Yankees' 7-2 win? see the the home run it's a fastball up and away and when you're as strong as Reggie you can see him extend ball wasn't quite enough away meanwhile with Brown due up it will be Lou Pinella coming up the pinch hit with two out of the bases empty that home run 
made by Reggie is the 10th in the World Series in his career. And of course, the first time he had a chance to play in the series back in 72, he was hurt, was injured in the championship series against Detroit. Missed the first three games here. Back in the lineup today with two singles, two walks, and a home run. And that's where he stands on the all-time list. And a tie with Lou Gehrig for fifth. It's a pretty good company. Great company and a good chance before he's through to at least pass the Duke and Yogi. And he's only five from the Bay. Little squibber fielded by Howe. Rifles at the first. And Pinella. And the Yankees are done in the eighth. But they net a run as Jackson hits one out. And at the end of seven and a half, it's the Dodgers eight, the Yankees seven, back in Los Angeles after this commercial. And a word from our local stations. As the game enters its fourth hour, Steve Howe tries to maintain this new balance of power, but Reggie Jackson, who's been a focal point of this epic's best and worst moments, has other ideas. The October Marvel becomes only the sixth player to reach base five times in one series game. And now it's a one-run contest with an inning to go. USC tackles Notre Dame tonight at 11.30. Lou Pinella stays in the game for the Yankees. He pinch hit. And is in left, and Dave Winfield, who started in center, went to left, is now back where he started. Bottom of the eighth inning, the Dodgers in front, eight to seven. Steve Garvey, Ron Say, and Dusty Baker with Tommy John still on in relief. Garvey hitting it foul in the count on one. Al, do you suppose the manager had orders not to play Mumphrey under any circumstances? It's beginning to look that way. I can't understand it if it wasn't. A direct edict. Talking about a 307 hitter. They get the appeal on the strike and the hand swing, and the count is 0-2. That's Bert Hooten, scheduled to be the pitcher in game six. Probably just throwing between starts in the Dodger bullpen, but then again, they have gone through the pen. Yeah, but somebody suggested that about John. Well, I think you. Well, I said maybe. I said you don't know. I mean, even even Tommy didn't know he was warming up to get into the game. You saw him. Yeah. Call one out for him. One and two the count. When John came in, he said, who, me? Bobby foul tipping it into Cerrone's glove. One away. Well, it seems so distant now, but remember, Monday night football, this Monday night, Three Rivers Stadium, the Houston Oilers, Earl Campbell, Kenny Stabler, and the rest of the crowd against the Pittsburgh Steelers, both still very much in their central divisional race in the AFC, but each fighting back from a strong loss last summer. Ron Say, want to know the count. Say one for four today. Drove in a run with a fifth inning single. Line drive, base hit in the right field. With one out, Ron Say, a single to right. And Dusty Baker, the bat. So the Dodgers are rubbing last night with 11 hits and 14 today. 25 in the two games. After their offense had been dormant, basically in games one and two. Low to Baker, and the count is one and oh. Baker, green lighted, it's a fly ball to center field, and an easy play for Dave Winfield. Two away. Carol Thomas. Carol Thomas will come up. Batting for the first time in the game. Fouled away by Thomas. Ron Davis. They 
be the unhappiest man. If there were one transcendental key to this game, it was his failure to hold the fort. Lemon wanted to get two, three good innings. He didn't get it. I'm wondering how much more you still get out of John. It worked just one inning, Jim, and he's laboring a little. One one pitches outside to Thomas, two and one. Well, it seems to me what, what Lemon is saying is that if we don't win today, I want to have Gossage ready tomorrow to go three innings. Apparently, not that he's giving up today because anytime you have Tommy John out there, he can pitch a good game, but just wonder what this is going to do to his start on Tuesday night if he does pitch. Two and one to Thomas is fouled away. Two and two on Darrell. So Tommy John able to set the Dodgers down in the eighth inning. No runs, a hit, and they leave say at first. So the Yankees will come up, watching to lead things off in the top of the ninth, eight to seven, Los Angeles. Al Michaels, Howard Cosell, and Jim Palmer at Dodger Stadium. It's been a wild one, a game that has taken uh, about three hours and 20 minutes at this point through eight it's eight to seven Los Angeles and Steve Howe trying to get the Dodgers even in the series going to work on the Yankees in the ninth inning and scheduled to face Watson Cerrone and Rodriguez Putin is still up and throwing in the Dodger bullpen Bob Watson one for two, plus a walk and a sacrifice fly. One and know the count. Well, Howe's been living dangerously. Well, that He's he been has. hit hard, but to the fielders. Round into short. Russell to his left, and the throw pulls Garvey off, but he makes the sweet tag at first. And Watson screaming at Rich Garcia. Lemon will join the argument as Ferraro tries to move Watson away. Garvey with a sweep tag going by. Hmm. Look at it from this angle. Russell's throw, pulling Garvey off, and did he get him? Ooh. Why didn't Watson slide as Randolph did? That's because a situation for a slide. What? We may never play again. I guess. <laughs> he weighs about somewhere around the 230 range, pound range. And but he would have clearly been saved then. Well, that's, a, that's why I was surprised that Randolph was able to do that. That's a tough decision to make when you're in full stride. Rick Cerrone looks at a strike. You're trying to run down first base as hard as you can and the last moment go into a slide. You're exactly right. He would have been safe if he had done that, but it's a difficult thing to do. 0-1 to Cerrone. Inside. 1-1 one one on Rick. I don't see George Steinbrenner in his booth. The 1-1 one pitch. One Ground ball up the middle for a base hit. So the Yankees get the tying run aboard. Rick Cerrone with a one out single to center here in the ninth inning. And Aurelio Rodriguez coming up. Is he? Rodriguez started up and now back. And it looks like they may go to Barry Foote, the reserve catcher, a man with some power. And it is Foot who will come up here to bat for Rodriguez. But also very slow. A perfect double play man, as was Rodriguez. Maybe there's a time in this business when you should forsake this absolute law of platooning. A situation like this. What's wrong with using Bobby Mercer, who has hit left hand as very well in his career? funny you would say that because I talked to Bobby 
after game two and he said if there was a left hander that he wanted to face on the Dodgers staff it's Steve Howe because basically he throws mostly fastballs right over the top it's not like he's coming from sidearm position which gives most left handers trouble but really what Lemon is doing here is hoping that foot won't hit a ground ball and that he can get a good pitch to hit and we did see the ball hit hard off Powell last inning it's a matter of whether Steve can make some good pitches here Barry foot going for the downs in the count of one one foot acquired by the Yankees from the Cubs in April when Rick Saron was hurt swinging and missing at a 90 mile an hour fastball quickly on two Cynthia Howe He's not nervous. <laughs> and I think I see Bobby Mercer with a bat in the Yankee dugout, so we may see him yet. Pitcher spot due up next. 0 2 to foot. Got it. And made it look easy. Steve Howe blows away foot on three pitches. Corner up and away. Just three pitches. And here is the smallest professional through all the years. And maybe he won't hit a home run, but he's a great contact hitter. Lefty, righty. I don't care. Bobby Mercer, for the third time in the series, appearing as a pinch hitter, and this time he is not up there to bunt. Andre Robertson, meanwhile. Comes in to pinch run for Sarone. Very interesting. That's right what there. Jim Palmer was talking about with Bobby Mercy. He comes over and he's not that troublesome for left handed hitters. It's exactly what Jim just said. Well, we saw in the, I think the most trouble that left handers have is that, as we saw in Barry Foote, he made a good pitch. On the outside part of the plate, that same pitch to a left-handed hitter is not a good pitch because most left-handed hitters will open up because they're kind of what they call bailing out. And the ball, if, it, if it's on the inside part of the plate, is much easier to hit than the one away. So Bobby Mercer ready to stand in with Nettles unavailable. Rodriguez, of course, out of the game. Lemon would have some decisions to make defensively if the Yankees tie it or go ahead, but he'll worry about that later. One and all, and there you saw a fastball inside. For how to be successful, he's going to have to get the ball away from Bobby Mercy, preferably on the outside corner or somewhere in that area. A good part of the crowd standing with two out. The 1 0 pitch is inside again in the count 2 0 on Mercer. Willie Randolph. On deck. Robertson pinch running for Sarone at first. Two out. Mercer hits a slow bouncer to Garvey, who drops it, throws to the pitcher covering, not in time. Yeager will argue that ball. So the Dodgers come that close to ending it, but the Yankees are still breathing. And Willie Randolph will be coming up with a tying run at second. This game is unbelievable. Well, Bobby tops a high chopper. Garvey knocks it down. If Hal gets to the base, as you'll see, and he's stationary, but his foot's off the base. Again, as I said last night, it's a, it's a play you do every day in spring training. It's kind of boring while you're doing it, but it can be very important when it comes to winning ball games. And you see, doesn't really know where his feet are. Ooh. In that situation, you want to get to the base as quick as you can and be able to stretch out on balance. As it was, he wasn't able to do that. Ah, after that last run, it looked like a good call. What a crazy game. So here's Randolph tying run at second. Outside, ball one. One and oh, and has been scored as an error on Howe. 
So far, this is, in the terms of history, like the 47 series between these two teams and the 55. Randolph fouling it back, and the count is one and one. When we talk about classic confrontations, you have a fastball pitcher on the mound. He's been throwing most of his fastballs up in the strike zone. And the pitch that Willie Randolph likes to hit is a high fastball. Robertson at second. Mercer at first. Randolph lifts a high fly ball to deep right center field, but Darrell Thomas moves back and makes the pass. What a ball game. It was like a great fight with shifting tides and ebb and flow. And one had the sense that somehow the Dodgers would come back, trailing initially four to nothing, then four to three, then six to three. They tied it at six and six. They went ahead at eight and six. A Reggie Jackson homer made it a one-run game at eight and seven. Then this final threat. And maybe now with the game tied at two and two, the realization setting in that this may be a year of destiny for the Dodgers and not the Yankees. A team of character, a team that won't quit. Well, very well managed today by Tom Lasorda. The Yankee effort just in tatters with mistakes. So there it was, Al. Eight runs, 14 hits, two errors for the Dodgers. Seven runs, 13 hits, and one error for the Yankees. The series now even at two games apiece. Game five coming up tomorrow. And we remind you to be with us on ABC, beginning with the New York City Marathon tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Eastern and Pacific Time, 9.30 Central. Then at 4 Eastern Time, Sports Beat. And at 4.30 Eastern Time, game number five of the 1981 World Series live on ABC. The blip provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what Friendly Skies are all about. Today's game has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as a leader in sports television. Ninth inning, the tying and winning runs on. Two outs and up steps the Yankees' postseason power, Willie Randolph. Yankee hopes hang on Randolph's drive, but it's not deep enough. The Dodgers feel the sheer joy of having survived. And the World Series is tied at two games apiece. 